Hey, I'm Kyle and today I'll be showing you how to create an automated candy dispenser using a Raspberry Pi and I'll be adding a little bit of trick to your treat this year. I came up with this project as a solution for when I'm out trick-or-treating with my daughter. I wanted to make an automated candy dispenser for my house that will also provide me with entertainment. The dispenser is triggered by pushing the large red button. This button press would then open the flap, allowing them to grab a couple pieces of candy. But as a surprise to them, this also triggers the floodlight, blood-curdling screen, and a photo just seconds after the flap opens. These are the parts you'll need to assemble the project. Okay, let's go over the billet materials. The main focus of the project is the Raspberry Pi 3B+. We have the Raspberry Pi camera as well to take pictures of our victims. Power supply for the Raspberry Pi. A servo motor that's going to move the flap that controls the candy. This big button to trigger the action. Then we have this logic controlled power strip from Adafruit. I got this extended power cord because the one that comes with the power strip is very short. It's always good to have some extra wire for assembly. And then I bought the rest of these products from the hardware store. I found this container at the local big box store so we can dispense our candy. To simplify wiring, I decided to make my own screw terminal breakout board for the Raspberry Pi. This consists of an Adafruit Permaproto board, four 10 position screw terminal blocks, and a 40 position female header. To begin, I cut the traces all the way across in the horizontal direction right here to separate this row of pins from this row of pins on the Raspberry Pi so they're not shorting out. Then I soldered the 40 position female header into place then I flipped the board over and soldered the four 10 position terminal blocks into place. Then you can simply plug the breakout board onto the Raspberry Pi. After you're done with the terminal block assembly, then you can move on to mounting the motor in your enclosure. Depending on the enclosure you choose, you may have to mount the servo in a different fashion. We chose to use epoxy. I made sure to get the motor in the correct place to line it up with the axis I wanted the flap to move at, and then I mounted the flap inside with hinges. Next up, we'll set this aside and uh, then we'll do the coating and the wiring. And now we'll take the Raspberry Pi and do some programming. After you have downloaded the latest version of Noobs onto your SD card, turn on the Raspberry Pi and install Raspbian. This will take several minutes. Once the Pi boots for the first time, we need to enable the camera and install some additional libraries. To enable the camera, click the Start menu Select Preferences and Raspberry Pi Configuration. Within the pop-up, select the Interfaces tab and enable the camera and click OK. Another pop-up will show requesting a restart. Let's do that later. Next, we need to install VLC and its Python library so we can play the Scream MP3 track. Open the terminal and type this line of code. sudo apt-git install vlc and wait for it to finish installing. Once that process finishes, Type pip3 install python-vlc. After those run, close the terminal window. Next, you'll need to download a creepy sound file. I use freesound.org for mine. The link for the clip I used is provided in the code. For picture storage, I created a folder on the Pi's desktop titled Pictures. If you'd like to change the location, it's simple to modify in the Python code. Reboot the Pi and you're ready to go. Within the code, there are a couple things you'll need to change depending on the container you use for your dispenser. The servo angles will vary with placement of the servo in the flap. Now that we have the Raspberry Pi programmed, we're going to go ahead and do the final assembly. I 3D printed some props to go along with this project, but you can use whatever you like at home or go without. First we'll wire up the power strip, and that's going to control our light. The wires come into this two position screw terminal block right here, and those wires will be ground and a signal from digital pin 16. When pin 16 goes high, it's going to turn on these two outlets which will control our light. Make sure you cut these wires to the appropriate length. And you can pick whatever color you like. I'm just gonna use black and blue because they're kind of darker colors. The two wires that we're gonna bring here are negative and a wire from digital pin 16. So this logic wire will go into pin 36 of the Pi, physical pin 36, but it's actually GPIO 16 in the code. So that may cause some confusion. So that's this guy right here. The other one's going to go to a ground pin. We have it as pin 34, which is the one right next to it. 
Next up, we'll connect our switch, and that's going to be these two terminals here. So to solder onto these style of terminals, I like to poke the wire through the hole, and then fold it over. What we'll do is we'll run positive into this blue wire, and then this black wire will go to pin GPIO 18, which is physical pin 12 on the Raspberry Pi. To wire up the servo, I will remove the connector so I can attach the wires to the screw terminal block. On this particular servo, we have three wires. The yellow wire is going to be our signal wire that goes to GPIO pin 12, which is physical pin number 32. And the brown wire is going to be our negative wire. Red wire is going to be 5 volt positive. So that'll complete our wiring. Next, we just need to connect power to our Raspberry Pi and our power strip. And then we'll plug in our light to our power strip as well. Here you can see the normally off circuits. We'll have the lamp connected to the normally off. And then the always on will have the Raspberry Pi power supply hooked up to that. We'll get our speakers powered up and plug those into our audio jack on the Raspberry Pi. Our last component is going to be our Pi camera and that goes into this flat flex connector right here, right next to the audio jack. So you pull up on the black portion there, and then we just insert this. Now that we have the project wired up, let's take it to the tech lab and its final resting place to scare some people. As you can see here in the final setup, we have the button mounted in the Frankenstein head. We have the Pi camera mounted on the 3D printed hand. The Raspberry Pi is cleverly hidden in the back. We have the lamp placed up high to provide light for our pictures. With the speakers hidden, the trap is set. I told my coworkers about the free candy in the tech lab. Knowing Ashley is fueled by coffee, chocolate, and rage, I was certain it wouldn't be long. Like this video? Want to learn more about other interesting projects from DigiKey? Subscribe to our channel.